Thank you, ladies. Well, welcome to the March. Wait a second, this is April, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, huh? Welcome to the April 19th service for Christ United Methodist Church. Uh, I greet you in the name of God and His Son and the Holy Spirit. We pray that uh, this service will lift you and um, bring you closer to Christ. Some announcements. Um, Pastor Phyllis sends her love to you. Uh, she's keeping us in her thoughts and prayers. And uh, another announcement that we need to make is that to please check out the virtual field trip of Jerusalem created for our BCA students on the church website. Uh, gratitude and thanks to Jeff Collins and the BCA staff for keeping our students engaged and excited about their education. They do great work down there. Mm -hmm. Also, there will be uh, coming soon, it's up in the air right now, that we're considering having a, a, a Wednesday night Bible study. We're still in the infant stage of that, so uh, keep, it, keep that in mind. Also, uh, the leadership team will soon be calling on each of you to inquire about how, how things are going with your soul, your health, and what your church family may assist you with during this time of uh, social distancing. It can be challenging, can't it? Will you join me in prayer, folks? Precious Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you're here with us. We're grateful, Lord, that um, we can look to you for guidance and for hope. We're grateful, Lord, that you sent your son to uh, show us the way to forgive us of our sins. Lord, in this uh, troubling time that our country is facing, indeed the world is facing, um, we ask for guidance from you, and we ask for healing for all those who may be affected by this uh, dread disease that we're facing. Lord, I ask that uh, you bless each and every member of uh, Bryce United Methodist Church and all the folks in this community. We pray, Lord, that they learn to look, look to you and have confidence that uh, you are in control and that we should be grateful and that this will come out all, all right. Lord, we give you thanks again for all that you do for us, for the many blessings that you bestow upon us, and may we always be grateful. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's children said. Amen. to me. 
Again, ladies, will you join me again in prayer, folks? Lord in heaven above, we lift to you um, the thoughts and needs of each person that uh, is with us this, this, evening, this, this morning. We pray, Lord, that um, all people will, go will grow closer to you during this time of uh, national crisis. Lord, uh, I pray that we all appreciate more each other and that we learn to love one another more and trust you more so that we can all have a measure of peace in a very troubling and uh, scary time. Lord, we uh, know that you're in control. We trust that you will guide us through this, each and every one of us. For those who are ill, Lord, we ask that you put your healing touch upon them. We also ask, Lord, that you give strength and more compassion to those who are in the caregiving frame of uh, reference. We give you thanks, Lord, for our doctors and nurses and frontline people. Give them strength. We're so appreciative of what they do. And may they know that coming from you. Lord, we uh, sometimes don't appreciate the love that you have for us. Sometimes we take you for granted. But in times of national emergency, we rally to you. May we do that when there is no emergency. We pray, Lord, for guidance and for peace in this world. We're so grateful, Lord, that you love us. And we, we always remember where our blessings come from. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Uh, good morning. Uh, I've been asked to uh, remind us as a community of believers to don't forget to support us. I don't think that's a real secret. Uh, even though we're facing something strange, um, God deserves his portion. So please keep him in mind when you give. Um, also, um, and thanks for everyone who are sending in your offering by mail or by a friend. Also, we now have the opportunity to uh, also donate on our website via the, okay, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Uh, Please continue to faithfully support our church. ladies.
Well, good morning again. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, I pray that the words I speak today will touch hearts, that your message of love will come shining through. We pray, Lord, for those who will be hearing these words and whatever they may be facing, we pray, Lord, that uh, they can find comfort knowing that you love them. Lord, I give you thanks again for all that you do for us and for the many blessings you bestow upon us. And it's in Jesus' name we, pr we pray. Amen. I miss you. I'm looking at an empty sanctuary. Never in my wildest thoughts did I ever envision having to live during a time such as this. Fortunately, we still can semi-communicate. We can view and hear through the phone or computer. But it adds up to a step removed kind of fellowship. A hug or handshake cannot be replaced. There is no substitute for saying God's peace or many blessings to someone face to face. It's good for you and your spiritual soul to hear those words directed at you, isn't it? God's peace. Many blessings. When I thought about a topic to, to speak about today, I thought about having a, an attitude of gratitude. I've actually thought about this like about six weeks ago. Um, as I've mentioned before, I take a look at my faith journey and I give myself an honest evaluation. Where can I improve my relationship with Christ as I move along in this life? I figure I'm not alone. All of us need a little room for improvement. But if I can say something to a brother or sister in Christ, or maybe even someone that isn't believing, that may have a similar weakness like me, and it triggers them to action, then that's good. If they seek to improve their lives, to have a better relationship with Christ, that's good. Frankly, I don't think I express thankfulness or gratitude enough to God. I take things for granted, like fellowship. Then a huge wake-up call happens in the form of COVID-19. Fellowship is hereby restricted. Hmm. The rebel, the rebel in me says, hmm, I don't like that. I've suddenly realized how important fellowship is, especially when it isn't allowed. Something important is missing. John, the son of Zebedee, wrote about fellowship in 1 John, 1st chapter 5 to 7. I'm going to read that and then see if you can see a correlation. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Each of us can be in fellowship with Christ. That is something for which we 
can be grateful. He wants to be in fellowship with us. However, we may come up short holding up our end of individual fellowship with him. We can draw strength from our other believers in fellowship with him. There is strength in numbers. We can pick each other up as Christ leads us in the light, away from the darkness. So fellowship is an important part of having an attitude of gratitude. I'm grateful to have friends that will help me on my faith journey, to help me close, walk closer with Jesus. I can make attitude adjustments uh, by learning from and observing my friends. I'll never take weekly fellowship for granted again. What has happened, too, is my one-on-one -on -one fellowship with Christ has grown. I pray that your fellowship with Christ has grown as well. I have gratitude that Jesus is there. What other factor can help foster an improved attitude of gratitude? Well, let's think, Bill. How about forgiveness? Have you ever asked to be forgiven? After the person granted the forgiveness, do you remember how grateful or how much gratitude you had when you were forgiven? Just a little weight lifted from your shoulders. Here's a little story that um, I'd like to share with you um, about forgiveness. Um, many years ago, like in 1963, uh, I was a junior or senior in high school, and we went to a football game. And um, we had a pretty good team. We thought we were going to be right up there. But the night we went to this football game, the other team just cleaned our clocks. And it was ugly. We just couldn't seem to get things going. So uh, it was about halfway through the fourth quarter, and a few of us decided to leave the stands and go to where the school bus was. And um, so we did. And then uh, the game was over. Yes, we got beat. And it was a shame. But what happened after that game, and everybody was getting ready to go home, one of the cheerleaders came on to our bike bus. Her name was Vonnie Poskin. Everybody remember that, Vonnie Poskin, all right? And she proceeded to tell us some things we probably didn't really want to hear. What had happened is, is that during the rest of the fourth quarter, our team had scored a touchdown. It didn't make any difference as far as the outcome of the game goes. We wouldn't win. But she turned to the stands to ask her, her, her fans to cheer for her team that just scored a touchdown. And we weren't there. So she proceeded to come into the bus, and she told us which way was loose. And to be honest with you, I was a little miffed. I didn't think that I should be lectured to. And I had that thought in mind, OK, Bonnie, it's, we've had enough. See you later. And then as I uh, proceeded through my life, I thought about that night. And I said, you know something? Bonnie was right. You shouldn't desert your friends, ever. And I determined then that I shouldn't have had that thought about, you know, okay, Bonnie, I've, we've, we've heard you, that's good. And that bothered me. <clears throat> In fact, it's, well, it doesn't bother me anymore because I'll tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> Fifty years later, there's a reunion, and Vonnie was going to be at that particular reunion. And I'm thinking way, way back, 
I really needed to be forgiven for just thinking that she was wrong in trying to straighten us out. And so uh, when I got to the, uh, to the reunion, I, I sought her out and I said, Bonnie, I, got, I, have to, I need your forgiveness. And then I told her that story and she looked at me like I was crazy. Maybe I am a little crazy. What do you think, guys? <laughs> but she did something kind of cool. She took two fingers and she touched my forehead and said, you are absolved. And then we laughed. But that act of forgiveness lifted a weight off of me. And now, the way God works, I shared it with you. And I hope maybe you've learned something from that. I was forgiven and was grateful. Have you ever been asked to forgive? A little bit of a perspective change, isn't there? Just how much compassion is in your tank? That is probably a function of uh, your viewpoint of the offense that was against you. Forgiving can be very difficult. But not forgiving can exact a toll on you. If you don't forgive, bitterness remains. That is dark and destructive. God knew that we would need to be forgiven. So he sent Jesus. Through him, our sins are forgiven. I'm so, I'm so grateful. My attitude of gratitude is enhanced because knowing I'm forgiven, if I sincerely repent, lifts burdens I may carry. Others may benefit. And God is glorified. Paul's letter to the Ephesians in chapter addresses this. Chapter 4, verses 29 to 32 reads, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. God forgives. And he also offers each of us grace or unmerited favor. He's offered each of us grace from the beginning of time. Should we be grateful? Should we have gratitude? God's grace can bolster our attitude of gratitude. How comforting, comforting and glorious it is to know that his grace is freely given. All we have to do is honestly believe and accept what is offered. It is wonderful to know that God has been wooing us with grace before we acknowledged him. He made us right with him through grace when we accepted Jesus as our savior and surrounds us with his grace as we journey with him as we live. Can you see how God's grace can bolster your attitude of gratitude? His grace is a gift that keeps giving. How valuable a gift. Paul's words in Romans 5, verses 15 to 17, give great insights.
But the gift is not like trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Again, the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. God's grace bolsters our attitude of gratitude. God's love conceal our attitude of great gratitude and ward off the attacks of the master of deceit. He will try to deceive us, for sure. He wants to spoil an attitude of gratitude toward the living God. The book of Job highlights his effort. Who wins? Job has a class triple A attitude of gratitude. Job is my hero. God's love is there for each of us. As years go by, I've treasured his love for me more and more. Sometimes I feel all alone, depressed, and even abandoned. It could be an age thing. You gotta watch us old coots. When I get down, I turn to him and then feel his embrace. I know I'm loved. And that brings so much peace. Sometimes he shows up when he knows I'll need him. He doesn't always have to be asked. He knows me and my needs better than I do. I've benefited by being more proactive in developing my attitude of gratitude because now I treasure, number one, fellowship with Jesus and the community of believers. I treasure forgiveness. Jesus lifts my burdens and sin. I treasure God's grace, a freely offered gift of favor. I treasure God's love. And that says it all. I'm grateful for each. My attitude of gratitude grows stronger as I keep each in mind. How about you? My prayer is that each of us will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant someday. Have a shining attitude of gratitude. Don't miss out. Peace be with you.
and now treasured souls. May the Lord bless you, keep you, and make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.